Hello. All right. Uh, today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going over the basics of running a bootstrap in Stata. Uh, and what bootstrap is, is basically it is a sort of a magical little thing uh, that lets you get a little bit more out of your data. Uh, it also is a good way of trying to do things like estimate uh, uh, some standard some standard errors a little bit more cleanly, uh, especially if they're particularly difficult to estimate. You know, most of the time, if you're using a canned uh, method like OLS or Logit or something like that, the, the software package can calculate those standard errors for you. But you know, depending on how complex you get, what kind of thing you're doing, you might be doing something where the standard error is not obvious. Uh, or maybe it just doesn't even have a closed functional form, or, and you have to calculate it yourself. And one way that you can do that uh, is with Bootstrap. And the way that Bootstrap basically works is that you are going to calculate your estimate uh, over and over again using a sample of data that comes from your original sample of data, but that you have resampled from with replacement. Uh, so for example, uh, if you had a data set, uh, and let's say that you have five observations in your data set, and they go one, two, three, four, five, okay? And you might calculate the mean of those five observations. Okay, and that's three, okay? So then we're gonna do a bootstrap sample, and we're gonna randomly sample from this data set, but we're gonna do it with replacement. So maybe uh, we get a two here, and then we get two again, right? Because we can do it with replacement. We can get the same observation multiple times. And maybe we get a 1, and a 4, and 1 again. Okay, and then we take the average of that. Right. Uh, and then we do another bootstrap, bootstrap sample. And this time we're going to get maybe 1, and 5, and 5, and oh, we have three fives in that one, and then a 2. Uh, and then we take the average of that. Okay, and then we do it again. And we get maybe a 2, and a 3, and a 1, and a 4, and a 4. Uh, and we take the average of that once again. Okay? Um, so, uh, what we're doing here is that we're doing this many, 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 many times, and we're going to get lots and lots and lots of different averages. Uh, and when we take the distribution of these averages that we get when we do our bootstrap, that distribution is the sampling distribution of our original coefficient, whatever we're interested in. So if we're interested in the mean, right, and we do a bootstrap and we calculate the mean a whole bunch of times, the average of all those bootstrap calculations should be the true value of the mean. And the standard deviation of all those bootstrap estimates is going to be the standard error of our original coefficient, which is very nice, right? Because it's very easy to calculate a standard deviation. You just take the standard deviation. Uh, and that is your way of calculating the standard error of your coefficient. Uh, so let's do this in Stata. So we're going to do we're going to do a mean, even though we don't really need bootstraps to calculate a mean. Means are pretty easy to get the standard error of, but we can check that we're actually doing it properly. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to start out, we're going to create some random data to match with our bootstrap sample. So let's uh, uh, clear what we have, and we're going to set our observations to, let's uh, a nice big number, say 10,000, okay? And we're going to generate some random data. So we're going to generate uh, our variable x, the r normal, the normally distributed variable. And let's uh, give it a, um, you know, let's say a variance of uh, 4 and a mean of 4 as well. Okay, so if we do that. Right, we take the mean, oops, I forgot to do all the other parts. If we do that and we calculate the mean of x, okay, well, uh, we get that the uh, mean is 4, and we get that the standard error of the mean is 0.02. Okay? Uh, so that is basically what we're going to be trying to, to match with our bootstrap. So uh, we've got this data, we've created this data, and uh, we're going to save it. We're going to save it as original data.dta. Okay. That is the, uh, this mean, the mean of this variable right here is what we're going to be trying to get with our uh, bootstrap, right? Now, in this case, we're trying to match the original mean uh, because uh, this is just a demonstration. And because we know that the, 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 when we're just doing a mean, something as simple as that, we know that this is correct, right? We don't need to worry about this being wrong. And if, is, if they're different, the bootstrap's going to be right. This is going to be right. We know they're both going to be the same thing. We know we're, we're trying to match. So we have our original data. So here's how we're going to calculate our bootstrap. So first, I'm going to decide how many times I'm going to do a bootstrap. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say local uh, number of boots, number of bootstraps I'm going to do. Let's say I'm going to do 1,000 of those bootstraps. Okay. 
Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blank data set that's going to store estimations. Because remember, I want to uh, uh, store all those bootstrap estimations and get the standard deviation of them after the fact. So I'm going to set my observations to the number of bootstrap samples I'm going to run. Okay, And then I'm going to generate something to store the, the those means in. So I'm going to say, uh, store means, I'm going to make it blank. Okay, great. So that's where we're starting. We're going to store all of our data in that. Now we're going to do our bootstrap. We're going to uh, we're going to resample our data over and over. We're going to calculate the mean and we're going to store it in that variable store means. So I'm going to do a loop for values i equals one. I'm going to take it all the way up to the number of bootstraps samples I'm going to do. Now here's what I'm going to do first. Now I currently have the place where I'm storing the data open, but I need to get back to that original data right in order to actually calculate the mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do preserve. Okay, that's going to keep this data storage data in memory. But it's going to let me do other stuff, and then I can go back to it really easily. Okay, so now I've preserved that data storage. I'm then going to use original data, that DTA clear. Okay, open it up. Then I'm going to use the B sample man. And what that's going to do is that's going to do this resampling for us, right? And it's going to do that resampling with replacement as it should do. Okay, so we've done our resampling, and now we're going to calculate the mean. So I'm just going to do uh, summarize. Uh, yeah, and then I'm going to do summarize x, right, because it loaded up this, this data set that has x in it. I resample, and I'm going to take the summarize, and I'm going to store the mean that I get from this summary. So I'm going to do local uh, mean that I got. It's going to be r mean. Okay, so I've stored it there. Now that I've done that, uh, I can restore the place where I'm storing the data, and I'm going to replace uh, my variable where I'm storing the data, store means. I'm going to set it equal to mean got, the mean that I got in. Uh, I. So that's going to do it just in the observation number I. Right? So I'm just going to start the first one first, and then the second one, and then the third one, and all the way until I'm finished. All right, great. So that's uh, it. That's really it. Uh, so that uh, then I can close the loop. Right? Now, generally, you're going to be doing this for something more complex, so there might be a little bit more happening here. But really, this is the bones of it. right? Uh, anything that gets more complex is really just going to happen in here, where you might be doing some sort of more complex model that you're doing in there. Uh, so once we've done it, uh, we've got all of our results stored. Uh, and we still have the data open at that point where we stored it. So let's just, uh, we're going to summarize the store means. Okay, and that would give us the mean and the standard deviation of that bootstrap result. And I'm going to go ahead and open, and let's also save our boot results, ETA replace. It's usually a good idea to save your bootstraps, because sometimes this can take a long time to run. Uh, and so you don't want to do it twice in case you want to do it over again. So let's just save it there. And then let's uh, just check our work. So we're going to open back up original data again. We're going to calculate the mean of our x. Great. One additional, a couple additional things to do while we're doing this. Uh, first of all, we're going to do this a bazillion times. We're going to do this a thousand times, and it's going to clog up our screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this all in a quietly so that none of this output is actually going to get put onto the screen. Second, I want to make sure that I know, you know where I am, especially if it's a more complex thing. So I'm going to put in a little counter that's going to check for me how far along I am in the process. So uh, let's say I want to check in every 100 uh, times that I do a bootstrap. So I'm going to do if floor, uh, and then i minus 1 over 100 is equal to uh, just Itself. All right, so what this is going to do, it's going to take 1, subtract 1, divide it by 100, take the floor, that's going to be 0, take the floor of that, and nothing changes. And because nothing changed, it's going to be equal to this. And so it's going to notice, okay, this is a one, 1 every 100, right? And then it's going to get to 101. 101 minus 1 is 100, divided by 100 is exactly 1. Nothing changes when you take the floor. So it's going to know that it's been, one, it's been 100 times since the last one. Uh, and I'm doing quietly here, so if I just have, have it tell me something, it's not going to show. So I'm going to do noisily display working on bootstrap number i out of boots. So it's going to tell me, and it's going to, and I'll put the time in there, at s time. Great. OK, now when I do this, it should just work. There you go. It takes a second. Right, so here it's taking four seconds for every 100. If you do something more complex, it might take a little bit longer. Uh, but this one's pretty simple, so it'll be done pretty quickly. Uh, so. We're going to see this in a second. Hopefully, it will all work out, and we should see that the means are going to match. Uh, the bootstrap mean should match the actual sample mean. 
Uh, and we should see that the standard deviation of the bootstrap estimates should match the standard error of the original data. And what we see here, we see that the means match pretty much exactly 4.0374. Uh, we get down to four decimal places before there's any difference between them. Standard deviation uh, matches pretty exactly with the standard error of the mean, right? Not a whole lot of difference there, something like a 0. 0.0003 difference. That's exactly what we want. So that's how bootstraps work. Uh, let me give you a quick example also of, of a place where I've used Bootstrap in an actual uh, 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 application. Uh, and that is when I was doing this paper right here. Now, this is a uh, paper that I did on uh, pure effects. Okay? And uh, so you're looking at people who are put into an environment together, and you're thinking, okay, how are these different people put into the same environment together going to affect each other? Now, uh, there's some mechanical problems with that, so there's an alternative estimator that I wanted to use that deals with some of the mechanical problems of using pure effects. The details of that are not important. But what is important is that uh, getting the standard errors for that strange estimation approach is very difficult. So how can we do that? Well, we're going to do a bootstrap. And in this particular bootstrap, we I did a little more complex. I didn't use the B sample because I wanted to make sure that I was uh, randomly resampling while keeping the uh, this group sizes uh, more or less constant. So I was shuffling people basically between groups without uh, resampling things exactly, but it was still a bootstrap. And uh, this was able to give me a standard error on that uh, estimate, which would have been very difficult to calculate by hand, and there's not a statistical package that can do it for me. But the same structure here applies, right? I'm creating a place where I'm going to store the estimates up here. Uh, I'm then going to go through all my bootstrap samples. I'm going to recreate my data. Uh, using resampling with replacement, and then I'm going to estimate my models. I'm going to store the results, and then when it's all said and done, I'm going to look at the distribution of my bootstrap sample. So that's bootstrapping uh, in a nutshell. Uh, it's a pretty simple approach. I do it all the time. It's good practice, uh, and especially if you have something weird, it's, it's an easy way to be able to calculate your standard errors. I hope this helps.